International Human Rights Organization. Amnesty International has written to the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department of the Police Service seeking permission to visit murder suspect Gregory Afoko. This follows a petition presented to the organization by the family of Gregory Afoko over his continuous detention despite being granted bail by an Accra High Court some three months ago. Now, according to a letter intercepted by TV3 and dated May 27, the visit is expected to be on Thursday, May 30, if only the permission being sought is granted. Now, the petition is sub uh, submitted on uh, behalf of Gregory Afoko by lawyer Robert Anton uh, Asakta, indicated that the suspect has suffered human rights abuses since being taken to the Bureau of National Investigations from the Intawam Maximum Security Prisons. The petition pointed out that at some point, his blood samples were taken without his consent. The director of Amnesty International Ghana, Robert Akoto Amwafo, is expected to lead the delegation to visit Gregory Afoko. Now, Gregory Afoko, a brother of former national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Paul Afoko, has been standing trial since 2015 for the murder of Adams Mahama, uh, the then NPP Upper East Region Chairman. The suspect is said to have allegedly poured acid on Adams Mahama on his way back from a party event. So we're going to stay a while longer on this subject. We've been joined in the studio by the country director of Amnesty International Ghana, Robert Akotomwafo, as well as a member of the legal team and human rights lawyer, Francis Xavier Sutu. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time and good to have you in studio. Um, I'll start off with you, uh, uh, Robert. So what in the family's petition do you consider pressing that obviously prompted the request uh, for a visit? Thank you very much. Um, for Amnesty International, anything human rights abuse, we do not condone to. And we see every human rights um, abuse as an emergency, um, especially when it has this gravity that we know about. And the fact that somebody has been arrested, has been granted bail, mm -hmm. and um, still is being held up, as the petition says. Mm -hmm. So for us, we think that it's important that we ascertain the facts of the matter by seeing the, pers the, 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 the person and getting the facts of the matter so that we can approach the case with a very objective view. Mm. Robert, all that the family is asking for is a release of the accused person. What exactly is Amnesty International going to do to have this release? So first of all, what we do is to find out, get the facts, and, and ensure that we are, we are operating in a space where everybody is fairly listened to and know. And then also compared to the laws that we already have, I mean, we have international best practices and then also our constitution. And what we are seeking to do is to ensure that whatever has happened um, is according to what our law um, permits. Mm -hmm. So um, if on the side of the, of, of the police and whoever is keeping him, if we check to, about to our laws and it states that they are keeping him according to the laws, then we, we have no say. But if it says that they are keeping him against what the law requires, then we would have to work with them to ensure that they obey the international standards that we have subscribed to as a country. But I'll come back to you. Uh, Francis Xavier Sosu is a nationally uh, acclaimed human rights lawyer. Uh, Francis, when the family says it, he has suffered human rights abuses, what exactly has he been taken through? that constitutes an abuse? Uh, I mean, in the first place, um, we acknowledge the fact that if anyone commits a crime, uh, the person might be subjected to our laws. Um, and the criminal procedure is subject to the 1992 constitution. And the constitution, I mean, protects the liberty of every Ghanaian in Article 14 and makes it very clear that when a person is unreasonably held or when a trial unreasonably delays, that person, without prejudice to any lawful steps that may still be available to the state, the person needs to be released, either unconditionally or on conditions that will enable the person to reappear you know, for trial. Clearly, to hold somebody uh, from uh, 2015 to 2019, it was May 2015 that this matter began when he was arrested. And we are almost uh, getting to the end of May. So uh, clearly, uh, his rights has been va violated mm. under those circumstances. Mm. You, you have know, once upon a time suggested mm. that this whole trial uh, is politically motivated. Do you still stand by that? Of view? course I do. You know, I mean, it's better we tell ourselves truth 
you know, and truth without any substantive evidence to show. Well, I mean, there is ample evidence. Where is that evidence? Well, I mean, we're talking about. But the man was was arrested no, in the but, time see, of the NDC. That, you know, that was the time no, he was arrested. No, that is correct. Mm. That is very correct. Mm. And I have been a human rights activist. I mean, through the regimes. Mm. Yes, and I've seen what has happened in times when I mean NDC was in power. So, so which of the political parties is, is motivating this action? Well, because he was arrested in the time of the NDC. But what is happening now mm. is motivated by the ruling, I mean, party, and I mean the, the facts speaks for themselves. I mean, rest is a liquidator. You don't need rocket science to know this because the matter in contention has to do with a former Upper East Regional Chairman mm. who is alleged to have been killed. Mm. Uh, in any event, mm. the person who is even standing this trial mm. uh, is, is, is a nephew or a niece or something to a, a former chairman of the a New Patriotic Party, mm. and they are the ruling class. Mm. And let us not hesitate to call a spade a spade. Mm. Let us not call spade small spoon or small fork for the sake of it. Mm. I think that what is happening clearly it's an abuse of office, an abuse of power, and a violation of, and a violation mm, of the rights of the young man. Right. Uh, um, um, Robert, so beyond this visit, what will you do if the CID refuses your request? We'll continue to um, speak to the, to the government accordingly and rise to the various levels that they are um, to ensure that we get the necessary hearing. And because um, as a country, we are entitled um, to ensure that we obey the international standards that we um, subscribe to, mm -hmm. especially um, Ghana being um, part of the countries that easily signs into international um, 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 statutes. Mm -hmm. we, we hope that the government would obey and would let give us the opportunity to speak to the person to show clearly show that we are not holding this person against his will and we are giving you opportunity to ensure that we get the facts of the matter so that if it, on their side as um, the police that they are right by holding the person, everybody would know. And that is why we come in as an independent body, um, a human rights organization with our reputation to ensure that we bring out the facts as, as far as we, we are given the opportunity mm. to. I, I must put on record that uh, my producers have tried very hard to reach the uh, Criminal Investigations Department of the Police Service with regards to this, this very matter. Uh, they say they will get back to us uh, on their own position regarding this uh, matter. Uh, Francis, uh, before the petition, uh, we are where you initiated processes to get the police to carry out the court order. What has become of that? Well, those processes um, are still in the pipeline. Uh, and let me put on record that there is um, an application for contempt, what is still pending. Uh, there is um, a habeas corpus application which is still also pending. And all these processes are meant to compel the police to respect the bill that was granted. Uh, you will recall that after the bill was granted, I mean, the, the state uh, disagreed and wanted to stay the proceedings. The High Court refused that application. They repeated it at the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal said, no, having held somebody, uh, I mean, for over four years without trial, you need to release a person. I mean, that, that is, it's a very simple principle. Mm. It's a constitutional principle. Mm. It transcends every one of us. Mm. And there are principles that we need to uphold. Mm. You know, and so we are hoping that as the legal processes unfold to get the police to do the right thing, mm. it is critically important that we engage the public because this has become a public interest matter mm. because it's not only about Gregory Afoko, mm. it's about every single Ghanaian right. out there right. whose rights could be violated right. in the manner that we are seeing right now. And right. we must say no to this. All right. Uh, gentlemen, I must say a big thank you to you uh, for joining me in studio. Uh, Country Director of Amnesty International Ghana, Robert Akutomwa, for as well as a member of the legal team and human rights lawyer, Francis Xavier Sosu. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. You're